Okay, so I'm here in the final file that we worked on. Let me first go and edit the issue of these uh, cylindrical handles not transitioning in properly into the background. So first thing I'm going to do is edit the high quality rendering settings. The color texture resolution, I'm going to set it higher. So let's say about 1024. So let's apply that. So this is going to give me much higher resolution texture in the viewport. So I can see exactly what is going on. Now, uh, first thing, the issue we are facing here with these objects is that they're not actually as flat as the uh, landscape which we have when they are transitioning. So let's actually just make them flat. I'll just select these edges and I'll just flatten this entire section of the face. Okay, so I've flattened out this entire section of the face and now I could just move this face down till it meets the landscape. Okay, so as you can see it almost literally in the viewport gives me the best result possible. It gives me a smooth transition. I can go smooth it out and here I have it. But another problem which we faced, uh, another problem which I saw here is that these edges of the cylinder, the transition face, this uh, corner section is giving me some shading and it's going to give me black edges on the corners. No matter what, it's not going to go unless I have a couple of edges there on them. So I'm going to just go ahead and add in a couple of edge loops for these corners. So bring those in there. So now when I hit 3 uh, to smooth it out, you can see that it does not give me any of those bad edges anymore. Now, uh, another thing I have to do is for this guy, so let me just go ahead and quickly do that. I'll select these edges and what I'm doing here is I've just selected the entire edge loop. I control deselected these edges, control right click, two faces, two faces. It selects all the faces linked to those edges. So that's how I selected the faces at the previous section too. So control right click options gives you loads of selection attributes when working with models. Okay, so let's go ahead set this up to. Okay, I want somewhere halfway between there. Okay, that is done. And another thing I want to do is insert the edge loop. So let's put in the edge loop here as close to the edge as possible. Okay, so now if I hit three, it should give me a good looking object. Okay. So this is the first step here. We have just gone ahead and uh, avoided the problem of having changes in the diffuse values when the object transitions from one to another. And uh, one thing which, uh, which is going to cause us trouble is that this object for now, if it has any shadow attributes, when it's actually touching this object, it might cast some kind of shadows and cause any problems. So for that reason, only for this object, I can tell no casting shadows. So all those problems just get resolved right there. Okay, so that is one step. We have just gone ahead, uh, avoided the problem of the diffuse values. Next, let's go ahead and try to hide the entire cylinder itself. So this cylinder, we are going to try and hide the whole thing. So let me go ahead, smooth out the cylinder and put it in a different layer and template it or basically reference it so it's visible but I can't really edit it for now. Okay so here now the easiest way to actually go about hiding the cylinder is by just taking this entire landscape and moving it up. So it just goes ahead hides the whole cylinder. But the problem with this is that if I go to the side view like this you can actually see the entire cylinder once more. So it's not going to actually solve all of our problems by just doing that. So. The other easy way to actually go ahead and solve this problem is to move it up and also rotate it a little bit in this direction so that even if I go to the side view this time, as you can see with the grid, I am in the side view, but the landscape is actually hiding the cylinder once more. So two things which I can do, move the cylinder up and make sure the sides of the cylinder are hiding my whole thing. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm here in this default section. And uh, if I want to go ahead and just take the cylinder and move it up, all the edits I've done with this uh, handle are going to be basically removed. So I don't really want to do that. I'm going to go ahead, select this object. Let's go to tool settings. Here I'm going to turn on soft selection, but with global turned on. What global does is that even if an object is uh, not selected, even if it's not the active object, it's going to move along with the object you have selected. So as you can see, even the objects here, the um, 
uh, tracking markers which I have are also being selected. So let's go ahead, just select those guys and I'll put them into this layer. So they're not going to be edited. And I'm going to move this landscape up till it hides this cylinder. And I want to move it a little bit above the actual cylinder itself, mainly because when there is any kind of motion blur, the cylinder's thickness will actually increase. So I don't want that to affect anything else. Now, I've gone ahead, uh, moved this up. Now it's actually time to go ahead, edit the sides so that that does not uh, show up the cylinder when we are looking at it from the sides. So to do this, let me select this whole object and let's actually also select the side handles. We'll go to create deformers in the animation menu set and create a lattice deformer. And in here, uh, okay, let me just reset that. I'm going to turn off the local mode, which is basically how the local uh, objects are influenced and how the transitions. Uh, I don't really want that because I want as smooth a transition as possible because the mesh is very heavy. And the divisions, I'm going to increase that a bit. So let's say about 10 divisions uh, in X axis, no divisions in Y axis and 10 divisions in the Z axis too. So let's create that. It should give me a very heavy lattice here. And um, another thing to note, the reason I'm creating a lattice is because it's also going to keep it still procedural. I can remove its value. I can remove its influence anytime I want. Now, I'll go to the lattice points. Select the corner lattices over here. I'll turn, off soft, turn on the soft selection and increase it. And back to tool settings, I'll make sure the fall off mode is volume, not global, because I want only the lattice points to be selected, not the actual points of the object. So we can move it down. Okay, soft select is not the best option there. Okay, so as you can see, I've just moved it down and the landscape has come through. And if I go to the side view, I can't really see the cylinder that easily. So let me go ahead, select the next row of these lattice points and move that a bit down too. So it gives me a much smoother transition. I'll do the same thing on the opposite side just to add in a little bit more interest into the landscape. So move this a bit down, move the corner ones a bit more. Okay, so I've gone ahead just uh, given it a bit more curvature to the whole landscape. So this should give me a bit more interest. And because this work is done now, I'll go ahead and hide the lattice. Okay, so what we now have is a cylinder which is supposed to be completely hidden. So let's actually go ahead, put this into our final scene and see exactly what we have. So whatever I have here, I'm going to go ahead, save this. So I'm going to give it a new name. Okay, and I'm going to select all objects in the whole scene, Alt Shift D to delete all history and I'm going to select the landscape and the fluids, drop them into the OBJ group and also delete the nerve circle and plane. So that's most of the work and I'm going to unhide the fluids which we have. So that should let me know exactly where the clouds are. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'll go to file, save scene as and I'm going to replace the reference landscape which we have. So replace it load in the final file and let's go ahead take a play blast and see what we have now.